Hey guys, Teresa Barber with Sippy Couture. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching, guys. Um, I really appreciate your support. Um, so thank you if you subscribed, and if you haven't, please do. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make this geo tumbler. And um, these always scare me because I've seen the fails and I'm worried about what it might look like, but this one really, really came together great. The colors play perfect. There's a few mixes that I put in there of some custom colors that I just grabbed from Mr. Nola's and mixed them myself. Um, like I said, I just love the way this one came out. Uh, this was over a white spray paint base. I did do another one, sorry about my nasty fingernails. Um, I did do another one that you'll see possibly in the background of some of these videos. Um, that is this one right here. It's on a Satin Sweet Pea base by Rustoleum is the spray paint. Um, I will list all of these glitters in the description. There's gonna be a coupon code to Mr. Nola's Glitter, to Hog, and a few other places that I have. So um, again, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And as always, let me know if you have any questions and come join our CP Couture community Facebook group. Um, we do live coupon codes and giveaways. So um, thanks again, guys, and let's get going. All right, guys, I'm starting off with a prep tumbler from Hog. This is um, a 20 ounce. It comes prepped, so I don't have to sand it or anything. I just spray painted it white to make sure that I got um, really, really good coverage. I didn't have any drips. You can't see any of that stainless through there. It's a solid white tumbler at this point. What I'm applying here is just um, a little bit of Mod Podge, and I have a few drops of pink acrylic paint in there to dye it. I like to do this to give my glitters a little more depth. Normally, I like to have a um, decent spray paint of color behind it, but it's just too hard to do it with this. So we have to paint this on in sections. So I have my pink, and I put it in just a general shape that I want that glitter to look like. Um, you know, that's very center chunky mix part this one came out a little big um but i wanted that i wanted it to be a decent size on the top and bottom so adjust as however you want so i put that glue on tap it all off <laughs> drop that glitter tap it all off um wipe it the way i want to go and then we're pretty much going to go on to our next color um there are some chunkies in here so i do um scoot them all back into the little section and then I also take a piece of parchment paper and I press that down to make sure that chunky glitter is laying down and I won't have to fight with it um, a little later on when I'm doing epoxy. I'm taking my glue again and I'm going on with the next color. Um, you'll see that I'm taking the glue and I actually lay this fairly thick. I don't wipe this down. I don't use my paintbrush and kind of paint it on there like with a paintbrush in streaks because I find that for sometimes when you do that, you'll have some areas where if your glue is thick, it'll kind of really soak that glitter in and the other sections, it'll kind of leave it almost a little sparse. So what I do is I dab this on and I put pretty decent chunks of, um, of glue down on there and I leave it fairly thick. That way my glitter can really grab it and soak in. So now I'm going in, I'm dropping down this glitter. This is a mix um, of, of two Mr. Nola's glitters. It is Loyola and Lady Marmalade, and it creates a really pinkish red. It's perfect. It almost be the perfect Valentine's Day color, but um, that's for later. <laughs> so we're going ahead and we're dropping this right along that line. One of the really good things about this color is that it ties in with that top one. That top chunky mix is Anne, and I added a little um, Lady Marmalade in there because I wanted it to be a bit bolder, um, you know, a bit of a bolder pink. So it's tying in, and any spots that kind of fall through or just um, are kind of playing off against that line. And I have this little feather brush and I go through and I wipe down all that extra. I want to make sure this tumbler stays fairly clean for this next step. That way we're not like kind of cross contaminated the glitters. So I went ahead and just wiped off all the extra with that. And then um, we're going to go in with our next color and we're just repeating this process. We're taking um, all of these colors. We're taking our brush, um, getting that Mod Podge in there, laying that line down fairly thick. I don't wait for this to dry or anything because I am using um, colors that are really close that really play off. So it's okay if it kind of gets into that next section. If I were doing colors that were completely different, um, like whites and then going to a blue and then doing a red, then I would definitely seal between each one. That way I can get in there with my um, feathered brush and really wipe everything off to kind of make sure that glitter isn't scattered everywhere um, and just making a mess. So um, same process, guys. We're just repeating this through the whole tumbler. I'll fast forward it so you don't have to sit through it all. But um, we're dropping down the glue one line at a time and then going in and dropping down our glitters. Again, like I said, all of these tie together. So it ends up looking really, really good on the end. Um, while I'm thinking about it real quick and it's about to come up, what you'll see me do with that feathered brush after I brush all this off is that um, I'll kind of go in with that brush and I'll push some sections in 
a little more than others. And I don't quite know the words to explain this part, but it kind of gives that line um, a bit more of a sketchy, jagged look. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to say this. Um, it gives it kind of like um, a varied look instead of like really straight lines. It gives it a bit more character, I guess. Um, you just take some spot to kind of push it in more and it gives that really, really rough, rugged. And I love that. I love the way that looks. And then um, I took the parchment paper once again, since that's a chunky, and I went ahead and laid it down and then we continue on. All right, this gold is the last color on this side. So I'm taking my paintbrush, making sure everything's wiped off really, really well. And then, um, I love the way they came out. And then we're gonna go ahead and flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. If you just wanted this detail on one side, you can stop there, but um, I really wanted to do one on the front and one on the back. So I'm going ahead and I'm repeating this process, starting from the very beginning and um, doing that same thing all over again, uh, making that first initial shape. And then every line from there on follows that shape all the way down, tap, tap everything off really, really great and keep going. I think for this shape, I actually not um, end up liking it. So I went ahead and added to the sides to kind of spread it out a little more. And then um, I think this is a side that I really got in there with a the paintbrush and gave it a bit more shape. Um, trying to visualize this sometimes is tough. If you want to, you can always draw this out with a pencil first. It will be covered so you won't see that pencil anyway um, because you still have to do those lines of gold and silver, whatever color you want those accent lines to be on the top. You still have to do that. So you can always cover up any lines if you happen to see it, but your glitter should take care of that where you wouldn't see it. So um, same process, guys. Go ahead and put the um, glue down one at a time and then the glitter. All right, so this is kind of our final look of it. Just so pretty. You want that to dry. That Mod Podge and glitter will set up to um, where it's really tough. Like you'll feel like you're touching cement um, if you if you let it sit. So it has to be completely dry. And then I took it outside and I gave it probably three good coats of clear spray paint. Um, doesn't matter if it's matte or gloss at that point. If it's matte, it'll shine back up. So don't worry about that. For this part, I love doing epoxy method. I feel like Mod Podge for me, I'm so aggressive and rushed. Um, that, you know, I like to work quick that I don't like the coverage I get in big sections. I don't mind it for a little detailing, but for big sections, I would much rather epoxy method, but do what works for you. For this, what I'm doing is I have speed dry. You guys know I love my speed dry epoxy. Um, it is a fast setting epoxy for Mr. Nola's glitter, so be mindful of that. And I put just what can kind of grab onto my finger um, all along that white part. And then I grab my heat gun and I go through and I use my heat to kind of spread it out and thin it out. And then I push that right up against those lines. You'll see me get really in there with my finger and, um, and push that epoxy right up against that line. There is no epoxy on the glitter right now. Nothing at all. You don't want anything on there. And also you want your... Um, spray paint, your clear spray paint to be completely dry. Um, if you do this part when any of that is still wet, then you'll have this glitter that we're dropping go over all of our hard work and you don't want that. So make sure that spray paint is really, really dry. Take your heat gun, get in there. Um, if you're doing the epoxy method and really just spread it all the way through. Um, what I do next is I take the palm of my um, hand and I use that with my heat gun to go ahead and thin out any lines. Sometimes whenever you're doing epoxy method, you will find that you'll get streaks in your epoxy. And my way of fighting that is I pull my glove really tight against my hand, and then I press the palm of my hand down onto the, um, the epoxy with my heat gun. And what that does is it creates kind of a rippled texture, and it evens out a lot better than if you were to, um, you know, keep kind of scraping at it with your finger. So um, continue to spread this through, flatten it out, and then we're dropping our glitter. The glitter I'm using right here is Garden District. This is such a pretty, pretty white. Um, it doesn't throw off a bunch of different colors. It does have a sparkle to it. Um, and it's probably my favorite. Um, actually, it is. It is my favorite um, shiny, glittery white to use by Mr. Nola's, um, actually by anyone. I, I really, really love it, guys. It's so pretty. Um, the good thing about this is since we did not put epoxy onto the glitter part and it is dry from the spray paint, we can go ahead however we want and drop this. It's okay if this glitter goes into those other sections. Whenever you tap it off, 
um, you'll see it fall off. Like you'll fall right out of those other glitter sections. As long as it's dry, you'll fall right out. So you don't have to be super careful with how you're laying this. Just go ahead and dump it on your cup, tap it off really, really well. And then, um, and then that's it for this part. We're just gonna let this spin and dry completely. And we'll let it set up. Like I said, speed dry epoxy. So we can come back in probably two, three hours. Um, I'll take it outside, spray paint it with clear. Make sure you get a good coat of clear on there to set all of that loose glitter in place. Um, kind of lock in any loose glitter, I guess I should say, because everything else will just be set with a speed dry. But um, take it outside, give it some spray paint, and then we're gonna go ahead and start with um, our layers of epoxy. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and apologize for the absolutely horrible camera angles. <laughs> this um, this um, episode, um, I don't know, tutorial. I uh, My brain was on TikTok, so I went ahead and filmed that way. Didn't quite think of doing a tutorial until I showed a picture and somebody was like, tell me how to do this. So I'm so sorry about that, guys, but hope this helps anyway. I once again, to be dry epoxy, everything is locked in place with some clear spray paint. And um, I can go ahead and spread this on. What I do like to do is I get all of my white sections first, just to be safe. Um, I know that I spray painted really, really great, but still um, that, that part of it kind of scares me so we get all of our white sections first and then after that is done after that big section is done then I go on and I start covering the other sections I'm a little more gentle even though it doesn't look like it um, I'm a little more gentle on this section so I go ahead and put it in there it's okay if your white travels to those pinks and golds but um, I really don't like it when those pinks and golds travel the other way so that is why I do kind of my lighter um, color first the color I have the most of first and then I go into the other so set this on um, another two hours and then we can come back with another coat all right so part of my focus for this tutorial was to show you guys how to do it so I didn't quite um film some of the things that I normally do like trimming the bottom but at this point um it has been sanded and then another coat was applied I always like to put a second coat before I do these lines that way um if that paint does kind of bleed or run a little it won't run into little sanded marks they'll stay kind of straight on those edges where we put it this is just um, a paint pen that I got from Home, uh, almost said Home Depot, from Hobby Lobby or Michaels, can't quite remember which one. Um, and I went ahead and I put a little dot on the paper first and I'm doing everything I can to kind of do one consistent line. If you do have to stop and kind of reload the, um, the paint coming out of that pen, push it against um, a little sheet of paper and then continue just above where you stop that line. Whenever you're using this paint pen, what it will do if you stop is it kind of leaves a little dot, like a little pool of where you lifted up that pen. But if you kind of pick up where you left off starting on the side of the dot that you already did, um, you can pull that paint down since it's still fresh and it won't give you, you know, just a dot right there as if you stopped, um, as if you stopped writing. So then I went on with silver. Um, this customer wanted to alternate lines. So I went ahead and went on with silver. But um, my, my marker died. <laughs> I had no paint in this. So you'll see me fight with it. And then I just grabbed a Sharpie. Um, the Sharpie was just as good as a paint pen, except it needed two coats. It did look a little more sketchy. But um, the end result, once I was able to get those two coats on there, um, it was fine. You couldn't even tell. I am going to go grab another silver paint pen, though. I like the way it looks a lot better um, since it has a little more um, color to it. So, um, you know, we'll grab another one of those. But... Um, the marker did just fine. This is Sharpie. I did not have to seal it. I didn't seal any of these. I drew these lines on there. And then um, once I knew they were completely dried, I took it um, straight to my turner and went ahead with the epoxy method. Once again, speed dry. Also the name. I like the name going on that little angle right there. I'll list the name of this font in the descriptions. Um, it is one of the prettiest fonts that I have. I think it's called Canyonland Script, but um, I will go ahead and put that in there as well and the size that I did. I just put it on a really pretty angle, stretched it out a little to kind of fill that space. Um, that was done. This already has epoxy on it. Um, like I said, I did that layer of, um, of epoxy. I sanded it, did another layer of epoxy. So that name is already locked in there. Um, I just wanted to be as minimal as coats as I wanted. And I knew that I can kind of fit that on with that last coat because it went on so so great the way that um, the splitter fell with the epoxy. So draw these lines on there and then um, it's on to those final coats. Okay, I stopped talking as if I was, I'm ready to show you guys epoxy and um, I didn't film it, I'm so, so sorry, but I finished off these lines and then I took um, my dry baby wipes, y'all know I love those things, with some um, 
acetone, I believe it was, on the bottom of that. And I went around and I cleaned up the bottom of that line and just made sure um, around the bottom where I already trimmed off that epoxy, um, that was cleaned off. That way this next coat can be the final coat. Um, this speed dry epoxy, it goes on so, so great. Thin coats work best with this. You really, the key to this epoxy is um, it loves heat. So don't be afraid to get your heat gun, get your torch, really work with it. Spread it out with your hand, kind of almost massage it onto your tumbler um, and you will get the most flawless coat. It's just crazy guys. It's insane. <laughs> I just love it. So clean up the bottoms, get that epoxy on there and you're done. It ends up being just such a pretty design. Super, super simple. Um, great in any color. We didn't have, since we use that parchment paper and we really just flattened it down as we were doing it, we didn't have to fight with any big bumps of epoxy. Um, every, that sanding step we did, we just had to sand this once and it came out perfect. Um, just like I said, I just love this design. So I hope this helps you guys. Again, please jump on um, Facebook, get to our Sippy Couture community Facebook group. We are going to do those lives, coupon codes, giveaways. Um, and then let me know what you think about this in the comments. Please subscribe and um, I'm happy to help. So let me know if you guys ever need anything. See y'all soon.